What is going on everyone? My name is Boyd and I am back with some more Age of Mythology, the Titans action, spawning in the top side of the map in the red color, playing as Set. His name is M. Phoenix. His opponent today in the blue color, playing as Set as well, is from the DoD clan. His name is Joe. The map is Painted Desert. And this is just a friendly game that I found on Voobly. Found a little bit of free time to do some casts. So I'm going to get some of these games out to you. Hopefully they are semi-decent. Joe always plays good. And Phoenix is currently number one on the ladder. That means he is the best in the world currently at Age Mythology the Titans. If you believe the rating at all. Obviously there's a bunch of people who aren't playing. Who are at a very high level. Uh, but... He's at the top. You gotta take him out there. Uh, you gotta take him off there if you think you're uh, if you're better than him. So we'll see if he can take these wins off Joe, or if Joe's gonna have that sneaky stuff that he loves to do and uh, take the wins here. We have found Joe getting those juicy, juicy elephants at the very start of the game. Same with M Phoenix. Uh, M Phoenix does chuck down the vision early, and so does Joe. So they both chuck it down in this location to see all of the uh, information on the map. Find those early elephants. That's their priority to start with. Uh, and we've also got Joe chilling around his elephant there with his hyena just to make sure that he doesn't get killed or anything like that. Also moving this pharaoh forward for some reason. Not sure if that was a misclick or what the dealio was there. But maybe he is expecting some sort of harass onto his priest or something. He just wants to defend that. Moving his hyena over here. He's going to notice the elephant has been converted there. And same with this one over here. We'll soon ch change into that new elephant. But it looks like uh, Phoenix just a little bit quicker. Come Like maybe 10 seconds faster than Joe here. But it's not going to be a huge difference there. The elephant being converted. Both elephants should be converted. And I'm assuming... Joe may leave this elephant close to the priest just to protect him. And that's the same as Phoenix over here doing that one. Just to protect the priest so he gets that conversion there. There's not really anything... Oh, there's a little lion as well. So I was going to say there's not really that much else you can convert that's aggressive on this map. You have two lion each. Uh, where's the lion for... Uh for Joe. Joe's lion are over here next to the town center. So he's going to have to move away, away, away to, to figure that one out. We've also got the hyena harassing this elephant just a little bit. This may actually be really bad for Joe. Does the elephant actually attack? No, nah, okay, it doesn't. I thought that was uh, one of those mechanics is if you get a villager to get attacked by the ele by, a, by an aggressive animal and you run the villager away, the elephant will start attacking the priest, right? But if your enemy attacks the elephant, it's not going to attack the priest. Uh, so it's just a little... Uh, it's a little thing you can do there, but doesn't do all that much. The elephant from Phoenix is going to come in now and attack this priest. Maybe? Maybe? Not Not sure. Just chilling here. They could send him in and start harassing the priest, but the elephant should get converted fairly soon, and then he should just be able to run away. There we go. The elephant is converted as Phoenix's elephant comes in, and as soon as he sees that blue elephant there, he runs away. Also weird to see Phoenix not going for these elephant. Does he not know about it? Not the elephant. He doesn't know about. He doesn't know about the the uh, the lion there. Just gonna be chilling, checking that out. We've also got this relic here, Eye of Horus. That's a huge relic right there. That's an extra, I don't know, two car camel caravans in the late game, or just an extra unit in his army that he can use, or I don't know, a bunch of stuff. We've got the uh, the elephants of Phoenix harassing this priest. That's gonna force the priest back to the base of Joe. There's no way that he's going to be able to just run around and find something like that. We do see Tar coming through for Phoenix and Joe, both at similar times. Both people got nine, is it nine villages is the standard? We got eight villages or nine, eight, seven villages on gold here for Phoenix and nine villages for Joe. So Joe clearly looking like he wants to grab the early second town center. Uh, he's got a couple of priests coming out as well to defend. We've got the Pharaoh out in the front. This is actually going to be beneficial for Joe because he's going to be able to defend a little bit easier because if uh he's getting attacked by phoenix he can just defend with the uh with the pharaoh there and still have a little bit more economy on his uh on his gold there we've got, still got more priests coming out we've got the animals popping out as well we are going to be moving into this location over here with all of his units and it looks like maybe phoenix is going to be making a move over there he's got all of his animals is uh Feral on the way as an early upgrade note. Neither player has any monuments, so that's not going to happen. We do see that the uh, the elephant coming in straight away. The priest actually cannot attack uh, any of these animals. They can only convert them back, but 
I don't think that they convert faster when you have four priests converting. It's still going to be the full minute you need to have to convert enemy uh, animals or enemy, enemy elephant. We are going to be seeing one gazelle does get picked off there, sniped by the pharaoh as uh, Joe's moving forward with that as well. We've got the second town center coming up now for Phoenix, just a little bit faster than Joe here as we're seeing the second town center coming up for Joe as well. He's going to be throwing that one down and it looks like he's going to have just a small amount of idle town center time here, but it should not be any issue there. As opposed to Phoenix, who looks like his economy is on point, got 200 food in the bank which means he's going to be able to pump out villagers super fast. Already has nine villagers on the food, and that's on Hunt as well. As we're seeing the attack coming in now. Going to be trying to focus down that Pharaoh. Wadjet coming down straight away. Pharaoh going to have to get out of there, but he is dragging that one in. Wadjet does get picked off. Second Wadjet down, and now Pharaoh attacking the other Pharaoh. As villagers get pulled off the food line, that's going to force the villagers out of there. We've got villagers attacking elephants there. One elephant does fall down. It looks like that was a red elephant, though, as they do decide to start gathering that one as the villagers completely chase away the blue army of joe and phoenix has got his second town center up has all of the villages popping popping out right now as joe gets his own second town center up you can see joe really struggling right now to pump villages he's got one village only one town center pretty much producing right now with with the 10 villages on gold whereas phoenix's army he's only got nine villages on gold but he didn't have them on gold for that entire time there and he is pumping out villages very very consistently so he's very Consistently getting ahead of Joe on the economy right now, just simply through his decision to put more villagers on food. Uh, and it looks like he may have potentially gotten out less priests than uh, than um, than Joe, but with the villagers on the defensive line there, he was able to defend. And now he's pumped out the priests a little bit later just to continue in that trend. So we'll see if he does go for the third town center or if he just sticks two town centers and grabs a... Uh, an armory of some description here and go to the heroic age uh, and we'll see if that's the same for joe as well looks like uh joe going for the early third town center because he was a little bit behind he also did have the extra gold uh earlier on so he will be able to get this one up and potentially catch back up to uh phoenix on the village account very very fast especially with the uh, 15 villages now on food he's going to start having excess food you only need to have four villages on hunt for one town center worth of villager production consistently if you're only building villages. Uh, so having 15 villages or even just 12 villages is enough to consistently pump villages and you can do something else like get your uh, get your economic upgrades, chuck more villages on food to get up to the next age. All of the above, we are seeing a little bit of a raid coming in now. We've got the obelisk coming up. Joe's going to see this one coming in, and he should retreat very, very quickly. Yeah, he does get out of there. He's going to be able to move back onto this town center, chuck up a wall or something, and he should be totally fine from any of this attacks right now. We see the third town center's up. How is Phoenix going to react to this one? Looks like he's gearing up to go to the second age. So he's got the economic advantage from having the superior early game economic decisions. Now he's going to be going to the, the, uh, the uh, heroic age and try and hit a timing whereby he's going to have strong economy or as strong economy as Joe for a period of time, get to the heroic age uh, and do some sort of timing attack and gold star potentially because all of gold mines, not all the gold mines, there is one back gold mine, but all the forward gold mines are a big issue for Joe because he's only going to have this one once it's gone. I mean, he does have gold mine in the base as well, but once both these gold mines are gone, he has to move forward and deal with that. So maybe Phoenix is going to grab map control, get that third town center, and then try and hold on to it for a later period in this, in this game. We'll see what happens there, but Joe... He's actually looking like he's not too far behind on getting to that next age. Maybe he's going to be only a minute behind if he can... Does he have the armory up? He does have the armory up, so he simply just needs the gold and the food. And does he have pickaxe? He does have pickaxe, so that's good for him. Phoenix, on the other hand, probably has hand axe. Oh, he doesn't have hand axe just yet, but it's coming through. does have pickaxe, has hunting dogs. Hasn't, hasn't sport a uh, husband yet, which is always a good upgrade, especially when you have... Well, you only have three goat, but when you when you're uh, hunting or anything like that, it's very important. Nephthys coming through. Where's the MIG dog going to come down? I'd love to see a forward MIG dog come down. When your opponent goes three town centers, and you've got a little bit of army out with with the priests and the pharaoh, 
always a good idea to just move forward with your villagers, chuck down forward Migdol strongholds and secure map uh, instead of trying to put this down back here. He's chucking down the siege workshop first, which I find a little bit interesting, but it does make sense if he wants to go for the timing push, wants to get out the early siege towers in order to start putting the pressure on, but he does need to get out some chariot archers in order to protect those siege towers from the, uh, from the impending villager doom that comes from Joe's economy. Villagers do have a bonus against the uh, bonus damage against those siege towers, but they are starting to come out. Pharaoh is actually this is a super interesting decision right here. He's empowering the siege workshop instead of the Migdol stronghold. So the Migdol stronghold is going to take ages to go up, but he's going to get out a bunch more siege towers, uh, and he's going to have so much of this resource in the bank. I actually think it might have even been a better idea to empower two siege workshops. These siege workshops only cost twenty five gold. Empower two siege workshops, get both of those up, and then get the Migdol Stronghold up and get out even more siege towers if he was going to try and do something like that. We see Siege Workshop now coming up for Joe. Question is, what's Joe's economy looking like here? He's only going to be able to build out Chariot Archers, and he's only going to be able to build out Siege Towers. So he may want to throw up two siege workshops of his own and just completely surround this town center so that he's okay to defend. Has he, got, has he thought about getting funeral rites here? He doesn't have the favor just yet. Doesn't look like that's coming through. He does have hands of the Pharaoh, so his priest is gonna be a little bit stronger. There we go, we got the two siege workshops up now for Joe. So that's gonna be nice for him. You can see the army is starting to get really, really strong here for Phoenix. And Joe can feel this uh, this attack coming because you can see Phoenix still only on two town centers. So. He's really going for it. He's really going for this all-in right now. If it doesn't do enough damage, it's going to be really hard for uh, Phoenix to stay in this game. So it's all going to come down to this push doing a, a, a phenomenal amount of damage. So we'll see if, if Joe can defend against this one or not. He does have both of these up. However, four Siege Towers to currently zero. It's going to be one. So that's a lot of Siege Towers to deal a lot of damage here. And we do see that the Chariot Archers do get a little bit of attack onto that one Chariot Archer. But there's not managed to pick him off just yet. As we send more volleys through and the Siege Towers are moving in. We're going to be focusing down this Siege Tower straight away in order to pick that one off as best as you can. We see a little bit of a raid up here. But Phoenix does deal with that one instantly. We are seeing the Siege Tower taking a lot of damage. You see his Shifting Sands coming in. Is there going to be another? No, just going to retreat. I like that. Not going to be overreacting or reacting too quickly to that one. That does pick off every single one of the uh, the priests there. So we could see a combination here with Ancestors in order to kill this off as he's running away. Uh, maybe a, 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 a wise decision in order to take down some of these Siege Towers. But does that Shifting Sands does buy Joe quite a bit of time here. And... That is allowing Joe to get the villager advantage here. As you can see, he's overtaking the score. The uh, population is 144 to 138. So a little bit of an advantage here for Joe as we are moving into a later stage of time. That, that timing attack didn't quite work out too well for Phoenix. However, I'm fairly sure that Phoenix's economy may not be as far behind as you think. Is Joe still pumping out villagers? He's still pumping out villagers and... That means that maybe Phoenix and Joe are, are sitting at a similar situation right now in village account simply because of the early game economy. Even though Joe went for the three town centers fast, he couldn't pump villagers consistently. So not as far ahead on the economy as you might think. Uh, we do have a couple of these Camry out. Generally speaking, you don't build Camry for any reason other than to run them around in front of your opponent's base uh, army and force them to uh, micro a little bit because you can't hit the camera they do sit at six speed. So you run them in front of your opponent's chariot archers and these chariot archers will start focusing them down. Similar to the siege towers, you put your siege towers in front of your chariot archers and that does force uh, your enemy to do that. We do see Phoenix chucking down the ancestors, Joe chucking down the ancestors. As he's raiding up here, he's gonna be taking out a bunch of these villages as all of this focus happening. We've got the shifting sands onto the army of Joe right here as we're moving in. We've got the mercenary cavalry coming out right now for Joe sitting at 450 gold. So he can pump these out very, very fast. Joe should get his pharaoh over onto this town center and empower that one to get those mercenary cavalry out even faster. But we do see that uh, this fight is going fairly decently 
right now for Phoenix. He's got the advantage in the Heavy Chariots. He's got the advantage in the army population. These priests are not focusing down the ancestors fast enough, and there's only four siege towers left right now. But the population now, 143 to 149. So it's very, very close, but mercenary are in here to defend. So looks like Joe going to be able to defend against this one, and Phoenix may have to start thinking about retreating right now. Uh, and Pharaoh is still chilling on this gold mine here, getting in the gold income to pump out these mercenary cavalry. No more mercenary. Look, I know I'm still pumping out the mercenary. We still see raids coming in onto Phoenix's villagers here as the Shifting Sands are not doing all that well right here. I'm going to actually lose a lot of economy while this attack gets defended. But all of those resources spent on the mercenary cavalry will start dying fairly soon as we turn around. Maybe don't turn around, just retreat, and these will start slowly falling in. That's 120 gold that they do die there, and if you can get away, it is a bit of a gold sink there, but Joe does come out fairly strong in that fight. Now he needs to start thinking about securing gold lines up here or over here and cutting off gold for Phoenix, because Phoenix is in a similar position to what Joe would have been in right now, because Joe currently has the army advantage. He may even have the economic advantage, because he's done significant damage to Phoenix's base. He needs to not overcommit to anything right now. I love the raids coming in over here. Does manage to pick off a bunch of these, uh, these villages here, and the wall does get thrown up there is another entry point over here as well which uh should be aware of need to wall that one off as well but chariot archer just gonna get away gonna force these villagers a little bit more idle time there chasing that chariot archer away but does manage to pick that one off finally there and i'm gonna retreat back into the gold mine here we see some raids up onto this gold mine three chariot archers dealing Maybe more damage than you would think. The Migdos Stronghold, or the Siege Workshop, is coming up now for Phoenix. And Phoenix is going to try and get some of that uh, middle uh, of the map advantage here. Nice walls coming up here but um, from Joe. But Phoenix is going to be all over that, preventing that one from happening too early as Joe's moving forward onto this location here. Maybe throwing down a Migdos Stronghold soon. But it does look like these three Chariot Archers from Phoenix are controlling this side of the map. And these Chariot Archers controlling the middle of the map. So Joe is pretty much contained to, to going for this gold mine here. Which is maybe what Phoenix wants here. Because his main uh, army production is in this location. Uh, and, but... As we see, Joe is now going to be going for that one. He's got a war elephant, he's got two siege towers, and there's really no army over here, and he's going to have to run straight through this Migdol stronghold right into the army of Joe, and Joe needs to be microing this one instantly. Here we go. Good micro here, transferring onto the chariot archers. Looks like the chariot archers, for some reason, trying to focus down the uh, the priests here, and it does look like Migdol stronghold is up, and that's going to force Phoenix out of here at this point. Looks like the Migdol stronghold is going to be falling down now for Phoenix. Phoenix chucked out another Migdol stronghold back here uh, and that one's going to be a little bit harder to pick off because it's right next to those villagers mining the gold mines but that's a big win there for joe and he is going to need to get more of these siege towers up if he wants to push forward he's only got three and we do see horace is coming in now for joe but phoenix well, doesn't look like he's that close here he's chucking up he's basically spending all of his food now onto camel caravans so he's not going to actually be able to keep up on the uh on the, uh, what do you call it, on the tech, but maybe he is. He looks like he's trading resources. He's stopped the market production and he is going to be advancing. So he's just going to be a little bit behind Joe. Looks like it's only going to be behind by 45 seconds-ish. Uh, so maybe not going to be that big of a deal that Joe's gone so fast to the Mythic Age here. And unfortunately, Joe looks like he's throwing away some units here. When you're advancing to the next age, generally speaking, attacking and trading is not the best idea because you want to save up resources that you can spend on tech when you hit the or when you hit the mythic age uh, but if you're spending all your resources on units you can't buy that tech and you just end up getting into this spam fest with crappy units whereas if you would especially when you advance first to the next age you want to be trading units if you advance next because that slows down your opponent's tech and their advantage in being and having access to that tech like champion chariots like flood control um, or even the camel uh, upgrade here. We see a little bit of a raid here from um, Phoenix. So that's going to be swept up by the mercenary cavalry coming in here. He's going to just be able to pick up all of these guys. Does so much damage. See all of these siege towers onto this Migdol stronghold. That's going to be way too much. There's no units inside here. There's too many chariot archers in the back to deal with those villages. We do see that the Migdol stronghold does come down and maybe... 
Maybe Joe's going to be able to make a move onto this fortified town center. If I'm Joe right now, I would be chucking up Migdol strongholds and everything, buildings up over on this location, maybe transitioning into Spearman as we can see the barracks coming up. Once you get those horse Spearman out there, super strong in the late game, can deal with all of these siege towers. We do see that mercenary cavalry are starting to pump out now for Phoenix. Horus is just about to come through um, and there is fortified town centers and no masons. So this is looking like this town center and maybe even this Migdol stronghold will fall very, very fast here. No, we do see that uh, Mason's does come through clutch as the uh, tornado decides to go after the Migdol stronghold instead of the town center. And it looks like it's potentially just not going to be enough to take this one down. And now we see Joe making his move over onto this town center to finish it off. There is enough siege tower left here to pick this one off. And oh, maybe needs to get onto it and we do see that is enough and we have all of but we do see all of the uh animals of set are in here right now to defend here so maybe maybe phoenix is going to be able to hold on here and we do see that a little bit of the siege workshops are up and villagers of joe have managed to pick off villagers of phoenix here as uh, Phoenix really needs to get this town center back up very, very fast. Maybe uh, Phoenix can chuck up the tornado and defend. We do see champion chariots has come through. Spearman starting to come through now for Joe. And on the spam is on. Joe really wants to just keep this down. Maybe if he can get up a catapult, he can keep this town center down for good. But we're seeing the, the, uh, the really hard thing about defeating Egyptians is they can spam on this map particularly is they can spam mercenary from this town center to defend this town center going up and we can see that siege tower is trying to come in here but Phoenix is way on top of that he's using his chariot archers to block off this siege tower from coming in it is looking like the town center is gonna get up yeah it just gets up before fortify before the uh the war elephant gets in onto it so that's going to be enough now for phoenix to continue in this game uh and maybe even get these camel caravans back to work he could have had them going over here but not having that one just yet there we go they are back to work and this uh siege tower does need to start getting attacked at some point looks like the chariot archers may be dealing with that one but uh, looks like we're moving in now. Joe's chucking up more Migdol strongholds. Uh, I think at this stage when you're versing uh, the mercenary cavalry, if you can get up watchtowers, it's generally a good idea, but we do see catapults coming in. So Joe's going to have to come up with some way to deal with that. And these, um, these medium spearmen may be spamming them at this point is not the right idea you want to be upgrading them and sticking with the chariot archers just, just a little bit longer. I think spending maybe too many resources on to the, uh, the heavy spearmen when you could potentially be getting out war elephants at this point in the game may be the better idea. Not 100% sure there, but looks like uh, Phoenix is going to be able to deal with this army fairly easily just with the chariot archers at this point. I'm not too afraid that he can just defend at this point. We're seeing some more walls coming up. You need to block in all of these open passages here that, that are on the side of the map uh, so that your opponent can't run through here. It may be even worth it just to run in behind one of these walls and do what Phoenix has done and wall off this portion of the map and maybe even this portion of the map. But that's not going to be that much of an issue. We do see Phoenix sitting at a strong 166 population to Joe's 160 population. So we are seeing that that Eye of Horus is going to be coming into a fairly large amount of advantage now for Phoenix having access to six more villages or two more... Uh, two more of these uh, champ or chariots or something like that. Generally speaking, better to get the six more uh, camel caravans so you can get out more of those mercenary cavalry. As you can see, still auto queuing these. You don't want to overdo it, but you do want to get out a fair amount of them so you can consistently pump these out, which it does look like Phoenix is able to do. Check out the armory upgrades. We see mostly bronze here for uh, for Phoenix, and we see a little bit of an advantage for Joe, but not anything too significant here. And we still, but the big thing is we still see that Phoenix has got access to this tornado. I like that he's held onto it. He's not going to use it too early. We see villagers trying to move forward here. Phoenix is going to be taking down this location here uh, and maybe able to get something out. Uh, because all of the spams over here, maybe uh, maybe Phoenix is not going to notice or Joe's not going to notice. But we do see the wall does get stopped here as Joe manages to get that one up. He's going to be moving forward. We see more of these uh, heavy spearmen coming in. Still don't have champion spearmen. Does he have upgrades? He doesn't even have the Horus upgrades. That's what I'm talking about. Maybe it's no point right now in building these spearmen until you have... Uh, greatest of the 50, 50 and um, the other one, which I cannot remember. Uh, 
crash of the 50 and spear of the horizon until you have those upgrades maybe not spear of the horizon but greater through the 50 um you really don't need to spam these spearmen because they die so quickly but once you get the hp bonus and some it is i'm confusing myself is this right no you want to get you want to get this one you want to get the uh, the spear of the horizon first when your opponent's building mostly champion chariots but the spearmen once you get greater to the 50 deal with those mercenary cavalry really really nicely and then you can start making the push forward we see walls coming up maybe time for joe to invest in stone wall you can see the huge difference in stone wall you get double the hp which is gigantic when you think about it it's for only 200 wood um 200 food 200 gold you see a bunch of these villagers are getting picked off here, but I don't think Phoenix really cares at this point about these villagers. It's more sacrifice in population so we can get more camel caravans. At 57 gold getting empowered, I think these camel caravans actually gather gold faster than villagers with um with fully fully upgraded gold villagers on the gold mines. Maybe maybe these uh, camel caravans do a little bit better. You see Joe's got some of these catapults pushing in right now, slowly but surely, and uh, maybe with only, th only three... Spearman over here, it's kind of fine for Joe to be spending that population over there as he's trying to push in here. Maybe it's time to think about, uh, again, stop producing these Spearmen. Spend those f that extra food you get on uh, on Champion Spearmen and also on upgrading your Catapult and just relieving a little bit of the pressure on Phoenix because Phoenix is only building Champion Chariots and he's able to defend here for quite a while. So maybe playing on the defensive and getting those upgrades is going to be really, really big. But we still see no real significant armory upgrades coming through just yet for Phoenix. Whereas Joe, no, still not inching that far ahead on that either. Uh... We are seeing these spearmen going to be bashing away at this uh, stone gate for quite some time, but the Migdor Stronghold should be up in order to defend against that one fairly, fairly well, at the very least. Looks like uh, this fight, we, need, we do need to see Phoenix at some point uh, building up something to, do, uh, to deal with this. I wonder if he can sneak some villagers behind here. What's the uh, line of sight looking like for Joe? Joe will see the villagers running through here and everything else but if he can run through and not get noticed he can run through this location run through this location and get something set up here which uh which joe will not notice but i guess you have to see joe's perspective to to see that you might be able to sneak something through there uh sometimes you can get get by running through line of sight but we are seeing phoenix yet again with those sneaky sneaky champion chariot raids moving villages forward we do see that a mercenary cavalry is going to be on his way to try and deal with this guy here but that's not going to do all too much as we see the fight from joe still trying to push through here we still see the uh cavalry dealing a lot of damage and there we go greatest of the 50 is up so that's going to give 100 bonus versus the uh the the cavalry and also hack vulnerability so those cavalry really don't do that much at all to the uh to the heavy spearmen and they do pick off these guys very very fast you can see the damage is pretty significant uh but the big story is these these catapult you don't need this many i think this is uh a, a big issue with late game egyptians is they overproduce catapult before they've got set before they're set up to push forward he's trying to deal the damage in bulk here but what you can do is you can build two or build one and send forward villagers and try and build up watchtowers to push forward. Um, you really want to force your opponent to put population into catapult because they cost four population, right? So if you can force your opponent to build out two or three catapult, then you can make the push forward uh, instead of all of these champion chariots picking up all your spearmen. Uh, you've got the spearmen defending against the mercenary cavalry. You've only got a couple of catapult. Got the champion char chariots. We got the champion chariot archers. And here we go. The watchtowers are coming up now for Joe. You're gonna have to get out crenellations though. Very very important. And here we go. Catapult with the upgrade. We do have engineers is up. Absolutely gigantic uh, upgrade there. Does give you such an advantage. It's um extra 50% crush damage on melee attacks. That's not what I'm looking for. 100% 110% siege damage versus walls, which is huge as well. Um, in order to pick these off in pretty much instantly. Uh, but it's also the extra crush damage you deal. And we still see docks coming up now for Joe. This is an interesting concept. You can get these docks up in order to build transport ships to make a move into this location. Maybe worth it, but 
feel like you could just walk through there at this point. But Watchtower is coming up now. We're seeing a bunch of them. Uh, not going to be using the Pharaoh to empower. I'm uh, going to be get, grabbing the extra gold here. Can always send the Pharaoh forward for a little bit. Empower these towers to get them up a little bit faster. But uh, it does have Architects. So they, they are going to be a little bit difficult to pick off. As we see the... Uh, the Spearman's now going to be making a move onto these Catapult. They do so much damage. You can see once they get onto the Catapult, they die basically instantly. So now these Watchtowers are going to start dealing a lot of damage to these Mercenary Cavalry. Once they attack them, you do need to have them attacking them. Unfortunately, attacking the Siege Workshop, it's going to be a little bit of an issue here. More Watchtowers coming up right now for, for Joe. And it's looking very difficult at this point for Phoenix to, uh, to hold on here. But he is... Pulling ahead at this point somehow. His economy is incredibly strong right now. But Joe is dealing the damage right now onto this fortified town center. More walls coming up, more units coming up. Joe sitting at 160 population to 166 population for Phoenix. Um, but we are seeing mercenary changing it up, going for the mercenaries instead of mercenary cavalry because all of those Horus upgrades are up right now. So I do like that that transfer onto these units here. Um, and now we're seeing war elephants coming up. We're seeing more and more watchtowers coming through. Need to focus down this catapult instantly. Otherwise, your watchtowers die very, very fast. We're seeing the uh, catapult getting taken away, but it dies so quickly to these heavy spearmen. As we're seeing more and more of this damage is coming down onto the fortified towns. And we're seeing some little bits of raids coming onto this location here, but that's going to take forever to deal with. We don't have any docks over here, so no shenanigans coming in there. See more of this push forward here, but fortified town center is getting kept alive by six villagers at this point point uh, and still no upgrade for joe's uh joe's catapult no engineers at all and it looks like joe really looking like he needs to make this uh attack happen as as he's trying to get these guard towers up does he have does have crenellations now so but it doesn't matter because no more mercenary cavalry are coming up we're just building mercenary cavalry from this town center and mercenary from this town center so getting both of them up at once very very fast more catapult, trying to get this one down. Looks like the gold income hit zero for a little, a little bit of a second there. So he needs to retask these villages onto this. But all of the catapult have so far been picked off by show. It looks like for some reason these this catapult was damaged before it got forward. Not sure. But maybe Joe really struggling right now for some reason to get economy. He's like losing all of his economy right now for some reason. Not able to pump out those units sitting 135 population to Phoenix's 166. And it looks like maybe Joe doesn't have that strong of a trade route or something. Doesn't have that many villages on food. Phoenix on the other hand with the 30 villages on food has a thousand um, food in the bank and he still has access to this tornado. So he can utilize this tornado at any time he likes if he wants to make that push forward at this point it would be a half decent idea because you pick off uh 200 you pick off maybe a thousand or a thousand two hundred gold here as well as all of these units not going to be able to get those back very very easily and maybe uh phoenix can tell that by the lack of units that are here so we'll see if that matters or not we do keep seeing these siege towers making little bits of uh, attacks onto this mid stronghold but it's really a waste at this point uh but yeah, if uh, if Phoenix just decides to use his tornado, it's going to be difficult for Joe to maintain this position that he's spent all of this time building up here. So we'll see if that's an option that happens or not. But maybe, I don't know. Phoenix still sitting at very strong population, able to pump mercenary from two town centers consistently in order to defend here. Uh, and it's just able to keep pushing forward. Walls coming up. Now we do see Phoenix's Spearmen are coming out. He's got greatest of the 50 as well, except there's not really any uh, cavalry out, so it doesn't really do anything. It does do extra damage to the War Elephants, but not much more. But the Catapult taking down all of these watch these Guard Towers, sorry, as well, and they're in a nice position here to be defended. We've got more Watch Towers, Guard Towers for M Phoenix up as well, able to defend here defend these these are uh, cavalry and it does look like joe is not able to to maintain this push as the spam is a little bit too much we see a ramming galley comes out going to be trying to take down this dog very very slowly uh but it will be able to take that one down eventually maybe better it would have been to build out a siege ship here but the uh, town center is definitely not fast, far, definitely not close enough to the shore to uh, to get taken down by anything like that. We see Secrets of the Titans is coming up for Phoenix right now. So this is the game plan, holding on to the uh, tornado right now. If uh, 
if Joe wants to compete with what Phoenix has got right now and go for his own far his own Titan Gate, he's going to have to deal with a tornado on it as well. So that's going to be really really difficult. So Joe's going to have to figure out how is he going to be able to stop this this uh, Titan Gate, especially because. Uh, Phoenix has got 800 food in the back, so he can basically just take off 15 or so villages from food and still have a nice uh, surplus of food in order to keep producing those things. Chuck down a siege, uh, Secrets of the Titans or a Titan Gate. Here, it's going to be really difficult for Joe to get in there and defend against that or stop that one. We do see another dock has come up somewhere for Phoenix. Looks like he's chucked it up on this side of the map, especially with the guard towers as well, stopping any sort of shenanigans on that side. Just being a little bit preventative, and and he's going to keep pushing forward now, taking down this entire location from Joe, as Joe is really struggling to defend. Joe has begun researching his own secrets of the Titans, but as we discussed, Tornado is still up, so all... Uh, all Phoenix needs to do is get some sort of line of sight up, but maybe Joe can chuck up walls around his entire base and prevent that line of sight from coming in uh, and get his own Titan gate up. And here we go. Six of Titans is completely researched, able to chuck that one down at any point he feels like. Not doing it just yet. Yep, there it goes. This side of the map taking off most of his villages, if not... Yep, every single one of those food villages only got three villages left there. So... That's going to be all of that food going to be depleted pretty fast if he keeps building out uh, these champion spearmen. Um, does he have all of his upgrades? Yeah, he's got iron upgrades. And does Joe have all of his upgrades? No, Joe does not. That's that's why uh, Phoenix was able to make that gigantic push there because Joe just couldn't pick off the units fast enough. And when those mercenary uh, get such huge bonuses from the uh, armory upgrades, uh, they can really push forward easily there as Joe cannot. We can see that time gate is coming up very, very fast. But he's got a long way to travel in order to get through to stop Joe's Titan Gate. So Joe's going to get up and he's going to be maybe 25%, 30% behind the Titan Gate of Phoenix. So he should be able to get that one up and before uh, the Titan gets to it. So he should be fine there, uh, at least in order to get the Titan up. Um, so we'll see if he does do that or not. Where Where is he going to go? He's chucking up in his base. He's chucking up all of his food villages over here. And Joe's sitting in a nice position as well. Has a lot of resources in the back. But we do see... Oh no, it looks like the Spearmen have managed to get a transport ship into this location. And the wall is not going to be up fast enough. So that's going to be a tornado onto this time gate. Does he know where it is? He does know exactly. You do get, you do get the, the information there. And we do see the Titan is going to get taken down by that tornado. And that's going to be way too much right now. That's super unfortunate there by Joe. He was ne not able to get the, uh, the walls up in time. And Joe is just going to have to deal with a Titan without his own one. And the Phoenix starts his wonder as Joe decides to tap out. GG. Well played there by Phoenix. One error. One error in not prioritizing these walls. Only having one villager there. Like you didn't even need to. You didn't even need to have all of these villagers. You could have had one villager building this wonder. Get these walls up. And then that little... Uh, that little line of sight was never going to happen you would never get that line of sight had that wall been up there and you would have been able to get this one this uh this titan up and deal with that but then you would have had to somehow deal with a wonder coming up from phoenix <laughs> absolute absolute disgusting play right there nicely won there by phoenix good defense joe had this game uh except did not prioritize getting up those upgrades that make his spearmen incredibly strong and for a long time there was sacrificing his economy and taking really inefficient trades if we check out the post game you're going to notice a uh, really large discrepancy here in units killed. You see 468 to 387. This is where the big units killed is. And if you check out the mythology, uh, or you can't actually see how many spearmen he built, but... Oh, you do. You see, 223 spearmen were built by Joe, which is a huge amount when they were not upgraded completely. Uh, so I think a lesson to be learned here is delay the spearmen. You can build, get the upgrades... Don't build Spearmen, but get the upgrades. And then start building Spearmen. Once you have Greatest of the 50, once you have Sphere of the Horizon, once you have some Armory upgrades, start building the Spearmen to make that push in there. And you would be in a really, really good situation there. But well played by Phoenix. 
Uh, if you enjoyed this game, please rate, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell. If you like my videos and want to see it as soon as they come out, my name is Boyd, and I will see you guys next time.